What's going on? This is Desmond with another video again, and I'm going to do it in video response to Rise of Atheism. And, um, you know, I, for some reason, my videos just would not upload when I try to make a video response to Rise of Atheism. Um, uh, I don't understand why, but, um, uh, you know, but here I am now. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just try to get through his seven pre uh, premises that he gave me and uh, just show him that uh, he was wrong all about it and he needs to do more research about the Bible. Um, I just want to be begin by saying that Rise of Atheism, sorry about not uh, responding to you right away. Uh, I tried, but for some reason my videos won't upload. So right now I'm just going to try to get through this and uh, hopefully you give me that response. Alright, let's get started. Hey, okay, I'm going to do the first premise and second premise just with a simple Bible verse for Genesis 1. With the Eminence Bible. I love this Bible too much. Thank you, Kirk Cameron and Ray Comfer. I love this Bible. And Solomon, thank you for getting it for me for my birthday. All right. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There we go. <laughs> that takes care of two of them. Uh, now let's move on to the third one. He says God is omniscient and therefore knows who, what, why, and how everything will happen. That's true. Based on premises three, God must have known that Lucifer would have turned on him before he made him. That's also true. Uh, that's why God, uh, he also knew that uh, humanity would turn on him. He knew all this would happen. That's why he provided a way for us to get back right with God. He gave us free will. That if you look at uh, Genesis uh, 3, it talks about how... Um, Eve was deceived and Adam out of his own free will, you know, Eve out of, out of her own free will, they both chose to disobey God. I mean, that's their decision. I mean, God, God isn't going to make them do anything like that. I mean, God, God is just going to give them the free choice that they, you know, want. Uh, let's move on to the next premise. That was number four. So let's move on to number five. God created Lucifer. Therefore, God created Luc Luc Lucifer's nature. And this is kind of faulty here. I'll tell you why. God gave Lucifer free will. That means Lucifer can decide to be whatever he wants to be. Uh, if he wants to be uh, a jerk, if he wants to stay with God, if he wanted to be loyal, if he wanted to be rebellious, that was his total decision. So actually his nature totally depended on Lucifer and his decisions. And uh, that said, I mean... It's just, it's just like humanity. We choose to do wherever we want. I mean, if you look at the story of Adam and Eve, that's a perfect example. We chose to disobey God, and um, God is just going to let us, you know, deal with the consequences of that, and that was separation from God. In Lucifer's case, that was eternal separation from God. Angels do not get a second chance like we do. Uh, let's move on to number six. God allowed Lucifer's nature. Again, I, I kind of already answered this, but I'm going to re, uh, reinstate this. That uh, we have free will. Lucifer had free will. Uh, Michael the Archangel had free will. Michael the Archangel did not, you know, fall away from God. He chose to stay with God. Lucifer, on the other hand, he rebelled against God, and that was his decision. I mean, God is not a tyrant being that's going to make someone do something that they don't want. If they don't want to do it, then they deal with the consequences. Consequences, and in Lucifer's case, this is going to be uh, eternal damnation, and he cannot, he can't change that, you know. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Now, we're going to move on to premise six. Now, this is really faulty, and I'm going to tell you why. Let me read this first. He's, oh, oh wait, uh, number seven, my fault. Uh, Lucifer's nature is sinful. This is very wrong. Lucifer's nature was not sinful at all. However, when he uh, chose to rebel against God, that's when he became sinful. Uh, see, temptation is not a sin. Uh, Jesus Christ himself uh, said he was temp uh, tempted, but he never gave in. Instead, he, stu he stuck with the word of God. He stuck with his father. Uh, he was not—he was nothing like Satan that Satan had seen. 
that uh, God's son was not going to betray uh, God the Father and God uh, the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus Christ is a shining example of what how Christians should uh, be towards God. We should be totally loyal to God. We should be uh, obedient. We should uh, turn to God anytime we need help. As for Lucifer, on the other hand, uh, he chose to disobey God and he chose to rebel against God. That is when he became uh, sinful. That's when he became evil. Um, before that, Lucifer was not evil at all. I mean, if you look in uh, Jeremiah, it talks about, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to find this verse, but I'll uh, post it on YouTube later on. But it talks about how God adorned him with all sorts of stones and uh, he had his own dominion here on earth. Uh, he was one of the highest praised angels by God. Uh, I mean, he was top dog, if you want to put it that way. He was the top. And then he just, cho he, he got caught up in his own pride and thought he could be God. And that is when he went terribly wrong. I mean, if that, I can only imagine what the world would be like if Lucifer didn't fall, but that's how things happen. I mean, even if Lucifer didn't fall, I think humanity would probably would have still still fell because we're <laughs> we're curious beings, you know. But uh, yeah. But you know, it said, so your conclusion was therefore God created sin. This is obviously wrong because we of our own free will brought sin into the world. Lucifer of his own free will chose to rebel against God. Uh, God didn't put thoughts in his mind to rebel against me, or he didn't put thoughts in our minds. Uh, to rebel against God. I mean, we chose to do that. We can't put the blame on God for our decisions. Then this is what um, free will is pretty much all about. I mean, God knows what we're going to do. Uh, God knows exactly what we're going to do. But the thing is, is that we, when we go and meet God and all that, and uh, we try to blame something on God, no. <laughs> God would be like, um, did I make you do that? Um, is Wasn't this your decision to do that? Um, did, did you choose to rape this girl? Did you choose to steal this piece of candy? Did you choose to lie to your mother? Did I make you do that? I mean, the blame is totally on you. And uh, that's, what, that's what it says also in the Bible that no one will, will be without blame. No one will be uh, uh, spotless before God. We, that's why we all need Jesus Christ. And that's why I'm here to tell you riots of atheism is that Jesus Christ loved you so much that he died on the cross for you. And if you chose to seek out God, God will manifest himself to you. I'm going to read that verse to you, actually, because I think I still have enough time. It's in John 14. Let me get to that. Uh, take a small intermission. Actually, I'm going to read from John 14, 15. Uh, John 14, 10. I mean, that's just the start of everything, but I'm trying to make this kind of sweet and short. Uh, it says, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray to the father and he will give you another comforter and he will he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it, it sees him not nor know, neither knows him but you know him for he dwells within you and shall be in you I will not leave you comfortless I will come to you yet a little while the world will not see me anymore but you will see me because I live and you will also live at that day you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. He that keeps my commandments and keeps who he that has my commandments and keeps them, he it, it he it is that loves me, and he that loves me shall be loved of, of my father, and I will love him, and I, and I will manifest myself to him. That is the promise that God has given. That if you all you have to do come to God, repent of your sins and then also all you have to do is just believe, just believe in Christ and he will manifest himself to you, that is a given promise, and that's the promise that I've seen that's a promise that so many Christians have seen and that's why we continue to press on about Christianity saying this is the only way this is the only uh, truth, this is the only life because Jesus Christ has proven that to us and we just want to share that with so many people, uh, I know there's a lot of theological debates, a lot of um debates against science and all that sort of thing, but the thing the, the, the thing that we're trying to press here, most importantly, is that Jesus Christ loves you, that Jesus Christ loves this world. He wants us all to be saved. Whether you believe in hell or not, that is irrelevant. Um, that is irrelevant up until you get to know Christ yourself. Then you will know that hell is real, you know that heaven is real, you know that God is real. Everything that God has ever said is real. And then once you know that, 
you will also be out here witnessing, telling people the truth, because we do not want to see people out here go to hell blindly. Instead, we want to give them the truth. If they, if they chose to go to hell, then that's their decision. There is no one to blame for that except themselves. So, I'm going to end this video by saying, peace out, YouTube.